On this week's Tech Bytes, the foldable phone is making a comeback. So, there's lots of things in life that are made to be folded. Fresh laundry, a good book, and a bad hand in poker. But it wasn't until 1996 when somebody decided to make foldable phones happen. And they looked a little bit like this. Of course, we then moved on to touchscreen devices, but now Samsung is determined to bring the foldable phones back, this time with bending glass. On today's episode of Tech Bytes, we are gonna answer two important questions. One, why would you want a foldable phone? And two, are they built to last? Hi, I'm Jess Kelly, News Talks technology correspondent, and this is Tech Bytes, where we aim to make your tech choices that bit easier. Samsung recently held their Autumn Unpacked event and gave us four new devices. We now have the Z Fold 3, the Z Flip 3, the Galaxy Buds 2, and the Galaxy Watch 4. While this, the Z Fold 3, is the flagship of the range, and it is impressive. It does come with a staggering price tag of 2,000 euro, which is why I am most excited about this one. This is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3, which is considerably cheaper than the Fold at just over 1,000 euro. Now it's still a premium device. I'm not saying that's affordable for everybody, but for this level of innovation, I think that's pretty good. A lot of the talk about this phone to date has been around the stylish nature of its design. It's almost been considered a fashion accessory, which I actually think is pretty unfair. I've been talking about and reviewing phones for 10 years now, and very few have stopped me in my tracks as much as this one has. We all know the classic smartphone design. We have the iPhone 12 here. You will see this is not a bad looking phone. It's a nice looking phone, but it's a black screen with a colorful body on the back that's made of glass. This device here, you will see it's folded over. You can flip it out to display a beautiful 6.7 inch screen. Colors look great on it, photos look great on it. It has the 120 Hertz uh, refresh rate, which means if you're gaming, watching movies, TV, whatever it is, everything looks beautiful on this phone. However, the screen that I've interacted most with on this phone is this guy here. This is four times larger than the front display that we had on the Flip 2. And the reason I love it is because you can swipe across and get all of your notifications. You can interact, you can tap to send those auto replies to certain messages, whether that's on WhatsApp, Teams, whatever it may be. You can also swipe across uh, to the right and you can control your music, your alarms, any widgets that you can get on your phone, you can put here on the front display. And that has meant that I've actually unfolded it far less than I normally would interact with my phone, which I really appreciate as somebody who's trying to cut down on my screen time. Now, although it is cool and it's innovative, there are some things to be aware of as a user. First and foremost, you can see a slight bend in the phone. You can absolutely feel it when you are interacting. So say, for example, if I open out my Instagram, and if I'm scrolling through, you can feel just this slight divot in the middle of the screen. It is slightly visible. You're aware that it's there, but it doesn't get in the way. If you're watching Netflix, for example, face on, it doesn't put you off in any way, shape or form, but just don't buy it thinking that you're just going to have, you know, this completely smooth piece of glass. That's just not going to happen. If I fold it over, you will see this hinge here. Uh, this is, the bit that's doing all of the hard work essentially. So we have glass here, we've glass here, we've got this metal uh, hinge, and we also have a metal frame around the side. This is what's protecting your foldable glass screen. And again, I think we should take a moment and appreciate this is foldable glass. It's pretty cool. Now for the first day or so, I'd say I probably did this about a hundred times and it still feels completely secure. I'm not worried about breaking it. I'm not worried about causing any damage. You don't feel any movement in the hinge. You do feel like it's completely secure. I do think some people would rightly be worried about anything happening to this phone. Um, I'm kind of loathe to think how much it would cost if I had to get the screen replaced. So I am being very careful with it. But I spoke to Samsung and they said they have tested the flip and the fold extensively. And the hinge 
has a lifetime of a minimum of 200,000 folds and unfolds. The beauty of the fold is that you can pop it into your pocket. This phone fits in the front pocket of my jeans, which I haven't been able to say since the Nokia 3310. It is incredibly compact. A few people have wondered if stuff gets between the phone. See the way there's a little crease there? Look, your debit card could slide through. It's not gonna cause any massive damage. You have a little lip here on the side of the screen and that almost acts as a bit of a buffer. So if anything does get in, it'll sit in the gap, but it won't actually damage the screen. It does come with a layer on top as well. So there is a screen protector on the phone when you take it out of the box, which is very, very beneficial. And it means you don't have to go sourcing one yourself. In terms of the internal spec, the amazing news is that you are not compromising. You are not buying a gimmicky novelty phone that just has okay spec and looks good. Internally, we have a super powerful processor. We have eight gigs of RAM and we have up to 256 gigs of storage. So everything and anything that you would want your smartphone to do, this will be able to do it. As I mentioned earlier on, we do have the Fold device, which is the flagship of this range. However, having used both of them, this one absolutely gets my vote. I can see people using this phone. I don't think it's a novelty. I don't think, you know, it's a fashion accessory. I actually think this is an example of high innovation in the world of smartphones. If you just had this spec on a non-folding phone, it would absolutely be worth the money. The fact, however, that you are getting that innovative design, the fact that you are getting that brilliant front display that allows you to interact with it on an ongoing basis, reducing the amount of time you actually have to interact with the main screen, I kind of think it's a no brainer. In terms of use, I do find that I am charging it a little bit more than I would my iPhone 12 or even the S21. Uh, it does have a 3,300 milliamp battery, which is impressive. It also has that smart tech working in the background to learn your habits and ensure that it's not utilizing that ridiculously high refresh rate when you're just reading a static document, for example. However, I am back to charging in the middle of the day, which is not ideal, but not the end of the world. So in keeping with the impressive spec of this phone, it comes jam-packed with the usual impressive Samsung camera lineup. We have two 12 megapixel cameras on the back as the main camera, and we also have a lovely 10 megapixel selfie camera. A really cool thing to note, and I don't know if this will matter to you, but it will matter to me, uh, is that if you double tap the button on the side, you can actually open out the camera so you can take a selfie using the two main cameras and the quality is just incredible. Also worth noting, you can set the phone up at a 90 degree angle like this. You can sit back and you can see yourself on the screen and you can interact with the camera that way. While it's in that mode as well, it is super handy for uh, video calls. So whether you are on a Teams meeting, a Skype meeting, whatever it is, you can just sit down at your desk angle it correctly and you are hands-free. This mode is also really handy if you are looking to view content on the small screen. For example, I was in the office earlier on and I was watching a video on YouTube, had it sitting next to my laptop, sitting there like that. You can watch it in small screen mode and it is just another small thing that makes this phone a joy to interact with. So would I recommend you buy the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3? In a word, yeah. This is a very busy time of year for smartphones. We're gonna have a new iPhone before long. All of the brands are gonna be pushing out new devices before Christmas. And in my opinion, if you want something that is the height of innovation from the world of smartphones, this ticks that box. If you want something that is incredibly powerful from a performance point of view, this ticks that box. If you want something that is a joy to use, that will give you that extra edge in terms of future proof, this also ticks that box. It is 5G enabled. It does have the front screen that will enable you to interact with your phone in new ways. The one thing to keep in mind, and it is probably the only red flag that I found, is that the battery life isn't as amazing as we have come to expect from some of the other flagships. So do prepare to have your USB-C cable on standby. But beyond that, I've been using it for over a week and I love it. 
Like I absolutely love it. I was very skeptical. I know it wouldn't be like me, but I was pretty skeptical about the idea of a foldable phone. Would it be worth the money? Would it be a gimmick? Would it break? After seven days of using it exclusively, I can absolutely recommend it as one of the most exciting smartphones of 2021.